What is going on my Super Saiyan with just Rhyme Style here and I just watched episode 103 of Dragon Ball Super and gosh it feels so weird to say episode 100 plus in the Dragon Ball Super series. It's been that long already. Uh, which I know we covered that three weeks ago but still an incredible see that the series made it this far. Episode 103 was very very uh, emotional let's say that. Before I start I need everybody to press G to pay respect for my boy Gowasu. Like seriously, everyone just type in G in a comment, just press enter. That's it. Just G, that's it. Pay G to pay your respect. Because uh, unfortunately, we lost a universe that I I was waiting for this to happen. In fact, I remember weeks ago, I, I said, I think Universe 10 is going to get washed first because the characters, they just seem so much more... Um, there was something about that I was missing. And they were, they, were more, they were more on a brawl side than anything else. And because of that, I assumed that they wouldn't get knocked off first. Turns out Universe 9 got knocked out first, but Universe 10 did fall shortly after and they're out. They completely been erased left and right, that's it, gone. Now, the fight that we specifically saw in this episode featured uh, Obani and Rubalt, I think that's what his name was. If I got the name wrong, feel free to correct me down below. And uh, they seem to be the stronger, I guess the best fighters for Universe 10. But before we get that, let's talk about the beginning of the episode. Because the beginning of the episode does also continue on from last week, where we have Rie Brienne and Rosie taking on 17 and Goku, who are teaming up together. And once again, Goku, for love of God, stop dropping your guard. He did it again. Well, to be fair, I don't think he necessarily dropped his guard on purpose. In episode one or three, I think what he was doing is, is he was just kind of paying attention to how Rosie fought, and he ended up kind of doing the same thing because she fired those balls at him and tried to basically do like a bootleg hell zone grenade to him, and he did the same thing to her eventually. He kind of like used her own style against her, created those balls, and knocked her out. Did I say last week that she got knocked out? Uh, I don't remember if I did because I feel like I said that last week, in which case I was wrong. I, I don't know how I missed that, but she gets knocked out this episode, and then it comes out to re in. And no, wait, just kidding. She doesn't get knocked out. She almost gets knocked out. She gets defeated by Goku. But doesn't get knocked out because the Yard Rat from Universe 2, which by the way, he is confirmed to be from Universe 2, at least for now, that's what Goku says, pops in last second and saves him. Now what's interesting is, is you could tell from the intro of this uh, series, of this arc, who the main characters were going to be in the arc. You know, you got Topo, you got, well, mostly Jiren, because he's, he's been in the intro. You got Reed Brienne fighting Vegeta in the beginning, so the fact that uh, Yard Rat, the Yard Rat jumps in and saves them, uh, shows that there's a more important role for them later. So in the comment section below, let me know what you guys think specifically about that part and how I guess the Universe 2 Warriors are going to meet their fate in yet. Because let's be real, they're probably going to lose uh, at some point in the next uh, couple weeks as we get closer into the into the tournament. By the way, it's only been 37 minutes. According to the last uh, or to the episode outro, it's only been 37. Oh no, it's been 11 minutes. There's 37 minutes remaining in the actual tournament, and so far all this has happened. So anyway, at the beginning of the episode is mostly just kind of like, um, I don't want to say filler, but more of the, the ending that doesn't really go anywhere from last week where basically Rhea Brienne and Rosie end up getting saved by the Yard Rats and Goku and, and Seventeen basically just end up, you know, studying how to fight and then they win the fight but they don't knock them out so nothing really happens. But the more important part pops in when uh, Obunny and Rubalt challenge Goku and Piccolo, father and son, because everyone knows Piccolo is Gohan's real dad. Um, it was really dope. Now, what kind of disappointed me is Rubalt, which is Obani's uh, friend, the guy that gets knocked out of Piccolo. I expected more from him because I figured since these are the last two guys who are alive, they all have like these crazy techniques. And Obani had a really good technique. He's able to basically manipulate his energy to the point where you can't tell uh, which is which. Basically, it's it's kind of like doing. It reminds me of Madara's uh, Limbo clones, but not really Limbo clones. Essentially, what he does is, is he creates an after image of himself uh, many times, and because of how he shifts his energy. It's hard to tell which one is real. So because that Gohan had trouble hitting him until he realized, you know what, fine. You want to play the game? Bet. So he goes into his ultimate form and basically allowed himself to get hit where he was able to basically go counter. Reminds me of Burst Rush, which is kind of funny because Xenoverse. There's a lot of Xenoverse references in the Dragon Ball Super Series so far. Though it wasn't really Burst Rush, but it reminded me of basically him relying on counters to be able to detect where Obani is and then knock him out. Uh, so because Obani had this crazy problem, I'm thinking, all right, what does Rubalt have if Obani is this amazing and he's basically pinning go onto the ground essentially what is going to happen to piccolo nothing he literally makes a hell zone grenade and, and and just knocks him out really really fast so this is the part i got really really sad because like Gowasu is a man that we all sort of got attached to in the last arc with the whole goku black and trunk stuff we learned to like this character a lot granted he was an idiot for letting zamasu get that far but still we, we like that character we had emotional connections to that character and for a second he gives up and goes well that's it we're done here but after you know bunny fight he's all like you know what you know what, I, I, I want to cling to my life, you know, I, I want to I wanna live. And just as that happens, the unthinkable happens. Obunny uh, runs out of energy, uh, Gohan's counterattack tactic ends up working, and he gets knocked out. So, he, he loses. Now this is the part that was really, really messed up, because 
Oh, Bunny, like literally, I'm getting chills just really thinking about this. Oh, Bunny was like, I have something to fight for. Not just the universe 10, but I have something else to fight for, which was his family. So as Gohan did his final attack on him, his little, um, little like uh, locket, let's call it, little locket falls off and hits the ground and revealed the picture of him, his wife, and his kid. And like, I'm getting so many freaking chills just thinking about this, that, that he was fighting for his family. He literally was like the equivalent to universe Seven's go. He was the Gohan of that universe. Go Gohan is here, not like not like literally, as in they're both like you know just as powerful and stuff. Obviously, Gohan is better, but I'm talking about in terms of like what they were fighting for, which is their family and their universe. And you could tell that Gohan really felt that when he when he knocked them out because the next thing that happened is they spent absolutely no time. Freaking uh, <laughs> Grand Prix announces it. Zeno, the both Zeno chants uh, hit the little button, and then that's it. Wave their hands, and universe ten was goodbye. Now, if you pay attention, what's interesting about this is you see the relationship, how it differs from Angel to God based on the universes. When Universe 9 was knocked out, Ro was a disgusting, disgusting Supreme Kai. And Sinjo, he was just not that good at God Destruction, but when they both got knocked out, uh, what was his name? I forgot his name. Uh, the Angel. I, I, Moscato, Moscato, I think that's what it was? Whatever it is. He just laughed. You could tell that he had no emotional connection to Universe 9 at all. He probably didn't like it. He was waiting for the moment to, when Universe 9 can be erased and he can be essentially freed. Whereas with, um, with Universe 10, when Universe 10 got deleted, she was sad. The angel was actually sad. And I forgot her name too. I should notice, but whatever. Uh, I'll look up the names afterwards because I'm terrible with names. She actually felt sad. You, and you could tell that there was a deep connection between her and Sidra, uh, not Sidra, but um, Rumshi, the elephant god. And, and potentially go watch it. She was sad. So like seeing that like, okay, so it's like here we have Universe 9 which we didn't care about. We would have knocked out as soon as possible and not seeing Universe 10 which we knew was gonna knock out but seeing it actually happen it's like, oh my gosh, that's, I feel for you guys. And then especially seeing Gohan be the one to de deliver the final blow to the guy who literally was fighting for the exact same thing that he is. Once again, it shows you this, the real threat of this, uni of this uh, Universal Tournament and how like you can drop your guard, you can, you know, take this as a joke. This is not for fun. People are actually dying, or I guess taking the erases. That kind of the same thing. People are dying in this tournament, and it, it just—it was just so like, because I, I was laying in bed because I, I I ate some boo uh, boo boo. I ate some bad food earlier, so I felt kind of boo boo. So I was just kind of laying there, like oh my god, I'll just dying in the bed and stuff, because uh, it didn't sell that well in my stomach. But as I was sitting there laying down, I'm just like, oh, I I I, I noticed it's not just the bad food that I ate, but I actually feel I feel sad for this. This is terrible. So the only thing that I I know is going to hurt is when I watch Universe 6 go. I do not want to watch Universe, Universe 6 go. Seeing Shampa get deleted as well, well, I don't care about the Supreme Kai of Universe 6, but seeing Shampa get deleted as well as that entire crew of fighters is going to be depressing. And again, I still believe that at the end of this arc, the wish that's going to be granted by the Super Dragon Ball is to restore all the universes. And they're probably going to justify by, hey look, how about this? Restore all the universes, and in exchange, we'll probably do an annual tournament or something to kind of like satisfy the Zeno. Because both Zenos love what they're seeing so far. So I'm sure that's, that's a good justification to bring them back. So it's like, in the end, end of the day, we're not going to be that sad for seeing, you know, some of our favorite characters go. But still, like, seeing it actually happen is, you can't tell me you don't feel something. So again, press G to pay respect all over the comment section below for the loss of a great, great Supreme Kai. Minus the fact that he was an idiot that Zamasu uh, happened, but still, like you gotta you got feel something for the guy, as well as the whole deletion process of that universe. But yeah, so that's it. We are now officially two universes down, nine and 10. Who is gonna go next? In the comment section below, predict your next one. I'm gonna honestly go with universe three. Is that the one with the robots? I think universe three is gonna go next. Uh, as for why, just because they haven't really shown too much of them for us, and I feel like they're kinda like the next filler universe that no one really cares about, because like every other universe has more important you know, characters. Universe 11 obviously has Jiren and the Pride Troopers. Universe 6 has Shampa and the squad. Universe 2 has uh, the Magical Girls who obviously have some kind of important role because they haven't killed them off yet. So there's still there's still some important ones. Universe 4 uh, is the um, the rival with the mouse, uh, Quintella. I think like Universe 3 with, with the robots is going to go next. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below on which universe is going to go next to see which one you guys can actually predict this. The last thing I want to talk about is the next episode preview which has me so freaking excited. Super Saiyan God is back. My favorite transformation from all the sand forms available in the Dragon Ball series. I just love the fierceness of the red. Now, the question that's going to probably come up is this rhyme style. Why are they going to do the ritual? No, 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 they're not. They're not. You have to understand that at the end of the Battle of Gods fight, uh, Beerus even tells Goku, like, and I don't have to really explain this, but it, I, I've seen questions pop up after the leak happened. 
they don't have to do it. They don't have to do a ritual. Essentially, when when Goku achieved that transformation in the Battle of Gods movie, at the end you see him go 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 God again. He goes all red and stuff and fierce. Beerus even says you got a taste of the power. You made it your own. You kind of got control of it. So he doesn't necessarily need that form anymore because blue is better. But because you have to uh, you have to control how much key and stamina you use, you don't want to go all out because if you're tired. You know, 20 minutes into the, into the tournament, you're going to be in trouble. So the, the reason why he's going to be going uh, Super Saiyan God as opposed to going blue is to conserve that power because it, it is a lot more stable to use. It's still very, very powerful. It's stronger than Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 1, 2, and 3. But at the same time, it's not too o too overpowering for the body. That's why he's going to go God instead of go straight to blue. Because if you go straight to blue and use up all his power, he is going to be in trouble, especially when it comes down to fighting people like Topo and Jiren. But the cool thing about next week is the fact that hits is team out with Goku. That's like the dream team that I never thought was going to be possible. Like, I remember before um, when this uh, tournament article was announced, and I thought, oh my gosh, are we going to get the final rematch of Goku and Hit? But the next best thing was to get them to team up together, and it's actually going to happen. So it's really cool to see, you know, you, you saw Hit gain a lot of respect for Goku when they had the little fight in the in between filler arc when Hit came back to kill Goku, um, like episode 70. But like now that they're kind of like closer as warriors, it's really cool to see them team up next week, especially against the Pride Troopers. So I'm really excited to, to see next week the return of Super Saiyan God and the ultimate team up of Hit and Goku. So what do you guys think about next week? Uh, first one is pay respect, you know, for Universe 10. Comment G all over the comment section below. The second one is what do you guys think about uh, who's going to go next as far as the universes? And three, what's your overall opinion on the return of Super Saiyan God? Is it stupid? Is it not stupid? Do you care? Not care? Are you neutral? Feel free to discuss down below. That is everything I want to talk about for episode 103. We'll be back next week with Kira Buck as well. She's out right now with one of our friends. So we'll see you guys next week for episode 104. Where she's going to get really excited and explosive with the return of Super Saiyan God. And of course, teaming up with Hit. Hope you guys enjoy the weekend. My name is Ram Style. I'll see you guys in the comment section below. Peace.